Hello, good afternoon. My name is Juan Carbone from Academy Lab section 2582. And today I'll be going over the reaction, my presentation on the reaction of uh, rhenium catalyzed ortho alkalization of phenols. So this reaction was done by a team led by Yochirio Kanubu, excuse me for my mispronunciation, um, from the University of Tokyo. So with a reaction that can possess such a hazardous risk, such as this one, um, along with the chemicals used, it is important to be in full control of each procedure in order to avoid any dangers or mishaps that can be, that can be caused. Um, other than the $40,000 lab setting and equipment needed to perform this procedure in a safety environment, uh, the chemicals used such as uh, duranium, decarbonyl, uh, mistaline, phenol, and one uh, decane, um, they can all come to a cost of about above $2,000, uh, which is needed to form this reaction. Um phenol being the cheapest at above sixty dollars you can able to buy it from while therinium decarbonyl is the most expensive being at three hundred dollars um, for a normal amount all right so before we even start the reaction let's quickly take a look at the equipment needed for uh, this reaction now the glassware that we'll be using must be oven dried uh, before use uh, at approximately 270 degrees. Um, this is usually done in order to prevent contamination that can possibly affect our final yield or product that we're looking to get. Um, so the process is first started with using a Schlenic flask. Uh, usually 100 milliliters is, is good enough, um, which is then equipped with a magnetic stir bar. Uh, all of this is then connected to a reflux conductor with a three-way stop cork as shown here in the picture below. Um, and all this is usually done inside of a vacuum manifold um, connected to a gas line. And these you can usually find in any uh, chem lab settings. And the reason why it's important to do it in here instead of just the open countertop um, due to the fumes that can be caused by this procedure. Um, it's definitely something you don't want to be inhaling. Um, so this helps prevent any any leakage coming from the glassware that's caused potential harm. All right, so now that we have an understanding of all the glassware needed and equipment for this procedure to actually work, let's take a look at the materials and how actually all work together to to get our our desired final product. So firstly, we're gonna need about 488 milligrams of duranium uh, decarbonate. Uh, we will be using it as received. Uh, 1.5 milliliters of mestaline, which will be distilled from calcium for four years. 8.5 milliliters of one decane, which will also be distilled before use. And then lastly, we'll be using about 2.89 grams of phenol, um, which we be used, but before we use it, it will be kept in a sealed bottle uh, in order to ensure a good yield and that it does just doesn't evaporate into the air. So after the mixing the reagents, so we should see a white substance appear. Uh, with this, we add our mixture to a heated silicone oil bath at approximately 160 Celsius for about 48 hours time, uh, which is stated in the article. Uh, over that period of time, we should see our white mixture uh, slowly change to a colorless solution and then go to a more light brownish color. After the 48 hours has passed, we take it out the bath and let it cool to room temperature. We then take our rotary evaporation 
and use it to remove the solvent uh, we had just made. At this point, our solvent should be a kind of black residue, which we must then take and purify it through the Colgard distillation, uh, which is an air bath that is applied at 130 Celsius at 15 mm Hg. And this is in order to basically collect the sample, which should be a colorless oil at this point. Afterwards, um, the pure uh, 2 1 methanol phenanol is collected once it reaches temperatures of about 185 to 190, which then we take it to a water bath to receive a sample of approximately 5.65 grams or hopefully 80% yield of our colorless oil. Alright, so now let's take a look at the actual reaction workup. So our procedure is firstly being quenched with 2.5 moles of uh, dirinium decarbonyl. Then 1.5 milliliters of mesaline is added uh, once temperatures reach 160 degrees Celsius. Now we leave this for a period of 48 hours. And then once we extract it, we use a rotary evaporation. And the reason why we choose this first, it's due to this equipment's gentle nature when removing a sample. Um, the way it removes it is just by through simple evaporation. And this is convenient um, due to not having to heat up the flask completely, uh, reaching its boiling point, which could uh, likely cause thermal uh, decomposition to our sample, which is something we don't want happening. So once at 40 degrees Celsius at 60 mmHg, um, in the point we at that point we grab our black color solvent and purify it through a Kruger's distillation. Now, the way Kruger's distillation works is by passing our sample um, through a rotating distillation flask and creating a thin film of our material over the interior surface of the heated flask. Um, by doing this and having our sample go through a more larger surface, um, helps promote uh, rapid voltization under not so uh, crazy conditions, more mild, as we say. And then once uh, voltized, the material is then rapidly condensed into the receiving flask, which you could see is just slightly submerged in um, the ice water bath, as you can see on the picture on the, the bottom left. Um, and that, at that point, is this where we collect our colorless oil, um, which should be the pure uh, 2 1 methanol phenol. Um, in this whole workup, uh, 1 decking is actually our strong oxidizing agent, and phenol is our drying agent that is used at uh, about 2.89 grams. Okay, so as mentioned before, the sample is distilled through uh, the Colgers distillation, which is used to volatize the sample in order for it to receive the most maximum yield. This tends to be the most easiest form of purification. Um, and this optimized conditions uh, are of the most practical and efficient when it comes to dealing with phenols. So the final product is a colorless oil uh, when cooled to room temp. Um, however, firstly, let's take a look at some of the characteristics of the reagents we use. So Derunium decarbonyl has a melting point of 170 Celsius, a boiling point of 145 Celsius. Mesaline has a melting point of negative 44.7 Celsius, 
in a boiling point of 164 Celsius. One decking has a melting point of 174 Celsius with a boiling point of 170.60. Phenol then has a melting point of 40.9 Celsius and a boiling point of 181.7 Celsius. And as you can see here on the right, we have the NMR spectrum provided by the university. And the way NMRs uh, are also known as nuclear magnetic responses, they help determine a product. And the way they do that is through uh, nu nucleic spin. Um, I mean, I'm sorry, they measure the nucleic nucleonic spin under a powerful magnetic field which that helps them analyze the sample almost acting like a radio frequency of sorts and as we can see here on the right we have what what we're looking for the final product and it's an more uh, spectrum here you can see how it showcases the alcohol of the benzene ring and then the long carbonyl chain so now looking at the more safety requirements um in the article is obviously states that caution is required when working um with all the reagents um and when preparing for the procedure it is important to uh check and plan out thoroughly where do you plan on carrying it out uh, perhaps in a lab setting, make sure that you have all the equipment and all the glassware uh, all set and ready for you to use. Um, the article does warn that this procedure is highly recommended and only intended for people with actual proper training uh, with experimental organic chemistry. Um, a book is actually linked in the article. Uh, that helps the reader uh, kind of know the basic skills that they should have in a laboratory setting, um, as you can see here on the top right. Uh, any chemical waste that is used um, should be dis disregarded properly and according, and, and according to any of the rules of the governing body of your lab specifically. Although the materials that we will be using are not labeled with the red tape, which indicates uh, very, very basically dangerous, as shown here, it is still important to use them as if they were with the red tape. Use them with caution and with safe hands. Um, ultimately, uh, the article likes to say that ultimately, at the end of the day, um, if you plan on doing this procedure, it is at your own risk, and that the organ organic synthesis uh, article and and lab uh, don't guarantee your safety uh, because of like so many possibilities that can go wrong. Um, however, if you are able to follow each of these steps correctly and in a good amount you, there nothing will go wrong okay so finally um looking into this procedure more in of a deep understanding uh we can look at the mechanism however this article doesn't really go into much detail or if not at all on the mechanism or how to even figure it out which was honestly very difficult for me um, after looking at not only this article but other articles done by the scientists um, to see any way I was able to find out all I know is just it's done by through uh, fields craft uh, actualization however I really couldn't figure out the mechanism um, the only thing I pretty much was able to get an understanding of was, was that the um, one decine would attach to the alpha carbon of the phenol. 
So hopefully in more future um, research, I'm able to actually find uh, the step-by-step mechanism. However, I wasn't be able to. Lastly, uh, before we finish off this video, um, I would want to shine a spotlight to actual the actual scientists who discovered this and who put research into this. Um, so we can go into a bit more detail, starting from the top left is Yochorio Kunibo. A uh, little information about him, he was born in Japan in 1976, uh, received his BS and BH, uh, PhD degrees in the University of Tokyo uh, between 1999 and 2004, respectfully. Um, he was actually appointed assistant professor at Okumio University in 2003 and worked with the other students you see here in other projects. He was actually the group leader of Eroto Project, GST, and worked with other prominent uh, organic chemistry professors at the university. He received many awards, such as the Chemical Society of Japan Award for Young Chemists, um, and he actually published a novel on the highly efficient synthetic organic reactions and organic functional materials. Now, going to the right, uh, we have Masaki Yamoto, born in Japan in 1994, and making him the youngest out of the three. Uh, under the supervision of his, one of his professors, he was able to receive his BE degree at Yokomo University, where he met uh, the previous professor in 2017, where he actually worked to help to develop the Renium, uh, Renium Catalyzed Efficient Functionalization of CH Bonds, um, which is kind of one of the reasons why he was included in this team. And lastly, um, the last of the, the main three, uh, it's Mitsumi Nishi, born in Japan again in 1985. Um, he has a BE and PhD degree from Yokomo University in um, chemistry. Um, he has also worked in postdoctoral research had done postdoctoral research um, in Kenny Life Science Catalyst Project in the Iroto Japan Science and Technology Center in the University of Tokyo. Um, so that was just a little a bit of snippets of information about them and about their not only their work in uh, this research but in researches of the past. Um, and some from remarks from me, I, I had a good time actually doing this project. It was great researching um, from other countries, uh, researching just the chemistry and, and so the, the amount of detail that goes into a procedure, it's, I never knew how much work was put into it. Um, this procedure was not only done by these three men, it was made by a whole team of about like nine people. And it just really shows you how complex orgo chemistry can be and, and how we're almost learning everything new. We're, le we're learning something new every single day. Um, this research was only done in 2017. So who knows what's what will be discovered later on and i'm just honestly really excited to keep learning about it because it's it's really opening new doors to uh, a bunch of possibilities and it's thanks to works like these men that it is all possible um my name is juan carbone again and i want to thank you all for watching my video and hopefully you guys were able to learn something uh from this Thank you.